What's up guys, welcome back to FNG Academy. Buck here from Green Beret, here to help you guys get selected. All right guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about the swim test. What it's like, what you're gonna need to do, how to prepare, and some tips that I learned to make it easier if you're not the strongest swimmer. But before we do, a huge thank you to you guys who donate to the Warrior Dog Foundation. We're almost halfway to our goal of $5,000. If you haven't donated, please consider doing it. Help those dogs get the retirement that they deserve once they leave the service. Also, do me a favor, start leaving some comments down below about which charitable organizations you guys would like to see the FNG Academy give to um, so we can start collecting some ideas about what you guys want. Also, in the comments, help each other out. Let people know which phase in the Q course you're in, if you're going SEAL, where you're at, your training plans, this is a community. It's the comment section is a community and it's a good place for you guys to see what other people are doing, how you're training, where you're at, and the changes that you're seeing because a lot of things are changing in the special operations community. I know the SF pipeline is changing constantly. Um, I think if you go to the Q course right now, you start right in MOS phase. They shorten SUT. Um, don't completely agree with that, but the way I see it is like a pendulum. They'll make things easier until the quality of operator that comes out of that uh, pipeline is not up to par and then they'll have to ratchet it back. It's kind of the same thing that's going on with law enforcement. We're gonna treat them like trash and try to talk about defunding until the crime rate gets so high that we can't bear it anymore and then we have to start swinging that pendulum which if you guys are paying attention, we're already seeing that pendulum come back because crime rates are through the roof. But I digress, let's talk about the swim test. You're gonna have to take the swim test in selection after you get selected, but the one in selection doesn't count. So it's more like a practice, and then you're gonna take the one that does count in the Q course. When I was going through is during IUW phase, which is the initial phase where you do all your testing. Initially, what the test looks like is it's gonna be a 50 meter swim, 25 down, 25 back, and a uniform top, uniform bottom, and your boots. The mistake that I made in selection is they just kind of throw a bunch of stuff at you. I didn't pay attention to what I was putting on and I had a hole in my pant leg which drafted a ton of water and made it super hard to kick. Every time I kicked I didn't go anywhere so I ended up just sinking to the bottom and I failed. Which trust me, even though it doesn't count, the last thing you want to do is successfully pass selection, get selected and then have to go home uh, with a failure right at the end. It felt like crap. But what it taught me was that I needed to work on my swimming because even if I got put in that same situation where uh, my pants were ripped or my boots were too big and they're falling off, I still wanted to pass it. There were other people there that had the same issues and they were still passing it. So there's no excuse. There's never any excuse. So I trained for that same situation. I was gonna show up expecting to have uh, a hole in my pants, expecting to have too big of boots that were falling off and I was gonna crush it regardless because I'm not gonna let this opportunity slip between my fingers and then try to have some excuse that nobody cares about. So I trained my butt off. I highly recommend that you guys get into a pool and start swimming with uniform top and bottom in boots, obviously in a safe environment with the lifeguard and all that stuff. I'm not telling you to go drown yourselves. For you civilians, that's probably gonna be a little bit difficult. For all the guys that are on base in the military, they're totally used to seeing people come in and train in their uniform, so it's not gonna be a big deal at all. But for the guys that are not in the military, you might have to finagle that, talk to the people at your pool, let them know that you're training for special forces, and hopefully they'll be cool and let you train in your uniform and your your boots. Unfortunately, there was who just passed away um, in training in the Florida phase of Ranger School. Potentially, that could have been from drowning. Uh, Florida phase, as we all know, is a lot of swamps. So it's super important that you know how to swim and you know how to swim in uniform. So whether the Q course gets rid of the swim test or keeps it or makes it harder, you should always be training on how to swim, how to do it in uniform, and for all those guys who have already been to selection, you know Scuba Road. I had to swim in Scuba Road with my ruck on, so this stuff is actually applicable for real life situations. The last thing you wanna do is to be the guy that can't swim, um, and then you guys go do a river crossing or you do something, and now your team has to come back and get you and you become a liability. Or they lose you, and now they have to scrap the whole mission because they have to go on a rescue attempt to pull you out of the water. Don't ever wanna be the guy that everyone's having to come and help, so just make sure that you at least can swim comfortably and confident in uniform with your boots. The stroke that you're allowed to use, as far as I remember, they weren't very specific on the stroke, but I always did a breaststroke. I thought the breaststroke was the most efficient. It worked well having uniform on. It worked well with all the drag of your uniform and your boots. So the tips that I would recommend if you're not a strong swimmer to make it easier is obviously to practice the breaststroke, get good at it, 
practice in your uniform, but there's a couple other things. First of all, don't have the heaviest boots or don't just pick the boots that you wear all the time and be like, those are good enough. Um, I was so worried about it because I wasn't that great of a swimmer. I went and found some lightweight boots, removed the insoles to make sure that there, there wasn't insoles in there that were gonna soak up a bunch of water. So I had lightweight boots and I would just make sure they were nice and tight so water wasn't getting into my boots and slowing me down. Also the uniform pants I made sure were, you know, the ones that I wore all the time, they were nice and fitted and I would tighten my belt super tight not uncomfortably so, but enough to where water wasn't drafting into my pants and slowing me down that way. I just wanted to be as efficient as possible when I was in the water. When it came to the Q course and it was time to go in, jumped in, I did my 50 meter swim down and back and it was cake. So it definitely helps to get in the water and practice it before. Even if you don't have to do the swim anymore, it's just good to know how to be able to swim. The last thing you want to do is to find out whether or not you could do it when it counts, whether you're guppying for water in scuba road or if you decide to push your limits, go to ranger school, and now all of a sudden you trip in the swamps and you find yourself needing to be able to swim with a rucksack and your uniform on. So it's always in your best interest to get comfortable swimming in your uniform and your boots. Um, it's one thing in combat, but it really hits home when there's training accidents and we lose good soldiers over something that could have been prevented. All right, guys, I hope that helps. Get your butts in the pool, get your uniforms on, and start practicing. Talk to you next time. And I can't see but it's all be a sign. I know that you. Love